Here we are once more doing a nice, difficult physics problem. A pole vaulter jumps over a four meter tall bar, just barely clearing it at the very top of her trajectory. Over the course of the jump, she travels a total of 14 meters horizontally. We have to answer two questions. What was her initial speed when she left the ground? And at what angle did she leave the ground? We should operationalize these by saying, this asks us to find V naught, and then this asks us to find theta, okay? Let's program in what we know. We know, uh, first of all, we, we should really be drawing a picture. We have this four meter tall bar and the trajectory, which you should know is parabolic, is gonna have the very top of this parabolic path just at the top of it. So it's nice and symmetrical. You have exactly as much on one side as you have on the other. The question is, um, in what way did the person need to jump in order to cause this to happen? To get this to happen, we're gonna be looking at initials. So she must have jumped at some initial velocity, at some angle, and those would be resolvable into, this is the big thing about two-dimensional kinematics, you have to turn an angled quantity into two quantities in terms of like horizontal and vertical. So we're going to call this V naught Y and this V naught X. Now you may in your class be calling V naught X simply V X. And that's fine because V X doesn't change over the course of the problem. Only the vertical velocity changes over the course of the problem. Horizontally, the object or the person in this case is not accelerated. Okay. This honestly is a little bit of a curveball question because usually we get right to the part where we start splitting this into components using trig. But this has enough information that you can sneakily solve for part of it without needing to dig into the trig in the first place. Watch this. I'm going to look at the vertical, um, the vertical kinematics. The vertical kinematics have A equals negative 9.8, like always, right? The V naught Y is something that we don't know, but can hopefully find out. The delta Y is four and V naught F. Now, hang on, I wanna talk about this in detail for a second. The fact that we chose delta Y to be four means that we're talking about a specific initial and final condition because delta, delta Y goes from the initial to the final. And if delta Y goes from the initial to the final, what that means is that V naught F, V naught final, that must be talking about the vertical velocity at the time when you have reached a height of four meters. And you can probably see this happening in your head right after this person gets to the top of the four meter height, she begins to come back down once more. And check this out. This is why we're talking about this. Over here, Vy is positive because the person is going up. But over here, Vy is negative because the person is going down. Now, tell me something. What is in between positive numbers and negative numbers? It's zero. So at this point right here, this unique point right here, Vy is zero. So we know that V, V naught F here has to be zero if we are specifically talking about the top of the trajectory, which we are. We chose that by setting delta Y to be equal to four. So let's look at the quantities that we have. We have acceleration, we have delta Y, we have V naught F, and we want to find V naught Y. There's an equation specifically for this. And it is this, V naught F squared 
oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, I've been using V not F. Yeah, that's a contradiction in terms. It's V, uh, v F Y. There, that's more like it. So V F Y. In case you were yelling at me for the last five minutes, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, v, v, F, Y, that's zero. Okay, yeah, V not F, that doesn't make any sense. That says initial and final at the same time. Oopsie, long day. So V, F, Y equals zero. Now we'll put it in the equation. V, F squared, Y equals V not Y squared plus 2a delta y. What do I know? I know vfy, that must be 0. I do not know v not y, but I can figure it out because I know what a is and I know what delta y is. So I can put in all the values that I know and solve for the ones that I don't. vf is 0, so 0 squared is 0. V naught Y is still unknown, so I have to write that two times negative 9.8 times four. And of course, everybody knows what that is. I'm gonna move V naught Y squared to the left-hand side, it becomes negative. Two times four is eight, eight times nine is 72, eight times 0.8 is 6.4, so this is negative 78.4. And then time for calculators because we're going to make both of these positive and then take a square root. So V naught Y is going to be the square root of 78.4. This should be somewhere around like 8.4-ish. Square root of 78.4. Oh, it's more than that. 8. Point yeah, 8.85. Now, what does this tell us? It tells us that this right here, this must be equal to 8.85. If we knew what theta was, it would unlock the whole triangle. We don't know what theta is, at least not yet. But we can say that this is equal to 8.85 meters per second. Once you've exhausted the vertical, it's usually time to switch to the horizontal. However, the other big signal that you should switch to the horizontal is that you have solved for time because time is the thing that is common to the vertical and the horizontal. It's the same between the two of them as long as each is programmed to have the same initial to final difference. So I'm not really done with the vertical yet, simply because I haven't found time. And that really I should do before I move on to the horizontal. So I'm going to say, there's one that I forgot to do here, the time. Well, I don't know what that is, okay? I'm going to go solve for it. I'll get rid of this because I don't need it anymore. And let me solve for time. Well, now I have delta y equals, V naught Y T plus, well, hang on, do, do I really need this, this equation? I don't actually need something quite this powerful because at this point, I don't have this as an unknown. I actually know that that's 8.85. And so now I can do something a little bit simpler. I can say, VFY equals V not Y plus A T. This is simpler. It doesn't have as many like squares and complicated stuff like that. So VFY is zero. V not Y is 8.85 and plus A T means minus 9.8 T. Move the 8.85 over and divide by 9.8 and I get the T equals 8.85 divided by 9.8. They're not negative because they both are negative. And so when you divide them out, the minus signs cancel. 8.85 divided by 9.8. Oh, 
divided by 9.8 is 0 0.90. So I'll just say 0.9 seconds. Okay. That means this is no longer an unknown. It's 0.9 seconds. So it takes 0.9 seconds to go from this up to here. Okay. Now I can start looking at the horizontal. There's a little bit of a twist here. So in case you think you, you totally know what's going on, do keep watching. For horizontal, I know that the horizontal displacement is, and now I go back to the problem to see what it is. She travels a total of 14 meters horizontally. But keep in mind, the whole point of solving for the time in the vertical is to be able to take the time from the vertical and put it into the horizontal. But we can't do that if the time isn't a match. So we can do one of two things. Either we can say that for horizontal, we're going to be going from the initial point only halfway, in which case delta x should be 7, and we get to use this specific time that we already solved for. Or the other thing we can do, which is equally valid, is to say we're going to start here and go the whole way. But then because the second half of the trajectory has to take the same amount of time as the first, we'll be taking double this time. Do you follow why that's true? It's because from here to here has to take the same amount of time as from here to here. So we can either say delta x equals 14 and t equals 1.8, or we can say delta x equals 7, that's half, and t equals the 0.9 that we found before. Either one will solve the problem. I'm going to just, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to do the second one. So I'm going to say delta x equals 7 and t equals 0.9, just so that I get to use the 0.9 exactly in that form. Okay, now v naught x, we don't know. However, it is now really easy to figure it out. Because watch this, for horizontal, I know there's zero acceleration. So this like granddaddy equation, the delta x equals v naught x t plus one half a t squared. Unlike in the sort of simple situation where the initial velocity is zero, in the horizontal situation, acceleration in trajectory is zero. So this is, zero. This goes away. So the squared term is gone. And I don't have to worry about it at all. So I've got delta x, which is now 7, equals v naught x, which is unknown, but soon to be known, times 0.9. Divide by 0.9. And I get that v naught x equals 7 divided by 0.9, should be a little over 7. 7.78. Okay, now how on earth is this going to assist us with answering the original question? The original question, which you shouldn't lose sight of, was what was her initial speed when she left the ground? Keep in mind what this lets us label in the diagram. Before, we had reason to celebrate about knowing this. Now we also know this v naught x. This is 7.78 meters per second. This actually unlocks both answers. What was her initial speed when she left the ground? It's the length of the hypotenuse. Because we know each one of the legs, we can now solve for the hypotenuse. At what angle did she leave the ground? Well, if you remember your inverse trig, you can solve for that once you know either the legs or a leg in the hypotenuse. We'll use the legs. So if I copy this triangle down here, just to have a big version of it, I've got V naught X as 7.78 and V naught Y, I believe was 8.85. And V naught here, that's the thing I'm trying to solve for. And I'm also trying to solve for theta. So a squared 
plus b squared equals c squared. Oh yeah, old school. That means 8.8585 squared plus 7.78 squared equals c squared. Take a square root of that, and that's going to be v naught. So the square root of 8.85 squared plus 7.78 squared is 11.78. And final answers in science class always get units. So meters per second. Now, the tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, right? So 8.85 over 7.78. That means theta itself will be equal to the inverse tangent, oh yeah, of 8.85 over 7.78. This, in turn, is equal to, let's see, inverse tangent of 8.85 divided by 7.78. That is 48.7 degrees. This answers both questions. So what was her initial speed? It was, that's not unknown anymore. Neither is that. Initial speed was 11.78 meters per second. And the angle is 48.7 degrees. At the end of a problem, I always like to look at it and say, what can we learn from this? What can we take away from it? The thing to take away here is that you need to uh, evaluate the information you're given and formulate a plan of attack. We knew how high this pole vaulter went vertically. So you can use vertical displacement, like from bottom to top. You can use that to figure out initial vertical velocity. And then that was the entryway into figuring out how long it took the time, once you calculate it, gives you a gateway to go from vertical into horizontal. And that was when everything really started to unravel because once we knew both the vertical leg and the horizontal leg of the triangle, the hypotenuse was no big deal at all. So was the angle. This is long though. I mean, we're getting into the hard stuff in the class. It's gonna stay tough for a while. So hold on to your, uh, hold on to your hats. <laughs>